In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to calculate the four basic electrostatic quantities, which are electric force, electric field, uh, electric voltage, otherwise known as potential, and electric potential energy. Um, first of all, notice our grid that we have here. We have six, negative six microcoulombs, which is uh, negative six microcoulombs is shorthand for times 10 to the minus six coulombs, which is, you know, one millionth of a coulomb. This millimeter thing, well, one millimeter equals 0 .001 meter or 1 times 10 to the minus third meter. So again, when you see micro, you just put in your calculator times 10 to the minus 6. When you see milla, you put times 10 to the minus 3. So the equations that we'll be using are force, which equals k, which is 9 times 10 to the ninth, absolute value q1, q2 over r squared, that's electric force, electric field, which is k, just one q, it only takes one charge to produce an electric field, then potential energy, which is k, q1, q2, notice no absolute values because it can be positive or negative, sorry, just r, and voltage or electric potential, which is kq, again, only one charge is necessary, times r. So those are our basic electrostatic quantities. Well, let's go ahead and start with electric field. You should notice that since this requires two charges and this requires two charges, we're going to calculate everything here at the origin. And notice there's only one charge producing the electric field here. You may say, but look, there are two charges. We're not talking about the electric force here or the electric field here. The electric field is different everywhere. We're talking about at this point at the origin. So at this point, there are no two charges. There's only one. So electric force and potential energy are not valid. So let's find the electric field due to the minus 6 microcoulomb. Well, that's going to equal k. Now, this is the way I write it. k, q. Now, it's absolute value, so I'm going to get rid of the negative sign r squared. These are millimeters. One, two, three millimeters squared. But when I put this in my calculator, I'm actually going to put in 99, 6, e, minus 6, and twice I'm going to do this. 3e minus 3, 3e minus 3. Now you should see 3 times 3 is 9, so these are going to cancel. Negative 3, this is 3, you know, 10 to the minus 1, 6 times, which is going to cancel out these. So the minus 6 and these cancel, and all I end up with is 6 times 10 to the ninth. And that's Newtons per Coulomb, which, just so that we know for later on, is also volts per meter. All right, well, that tells you how to do this. Now, let's see if my online calculator actually works for this. So I'm going to pull this in, and let's see if I can get this to work well. So if I were to put this in my calculator, I'd put 9 E 9. You don't need to use parentheses because of that E. Your calculator treats it just like a decimal. 6 E minus 6 divided by 3 e, negative 3, and I can just square that. And there we go, exactly like we suspected. Okay, move that out of our way. Our next one, we have this 8 microcoulombs, and our electric field here is E equals K. Well, let's just write it all out so that we can do the quick math. I tried to pick numbers so that we could do this easily. 99 without the calculator. 8 10 to the minus 6, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and two of them. Again, the minus 6's cancels out with these two. 8 
comes into 4. So how are we going to do that? So this one would give us a 2. So that one is gone. And 9 divided by 4 is 2.5. Or I guess let's do this one. We'll take a 2 out here, and we'll take a 2 out there. 2 goes into 9, 4.5 times 10 to the 9th units per coulomb or volts per meter. Now let's figure out the direction. What we do whenever we find direction, we always put a very, very small positive test charge. How small? Many students often say, well, if this is a positive, wouldn't it attract this one and push this one? Well, this is true. But we pick a very, 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 very small positive test charge. It's like instead, you know, using something so small, the Earth is not going to move when you drop a ball. So that's how small we're talking. This is so small that, that these are not going to move as a result, but we can use it to figure out the direction of the force. Well, this one is going to be pulled by it. So I'm going to put an arrow here. Doesn't really matter, I guess, which side. Okay, and unfortunately, paint makes me have to do this the long way. There you go. That's a pull. And this one's a push because positive charges would push it. Now, the actual magnitude of these is different, but we're just going to show these. And take this one, and actually, you should be able to just see that this is going to move, be pushed somewhere in the second quadrant. So this would be E due to the sixth. This is going to be E due to the eight microcoulomb. This is going to be the net electric field in the second quadrant. So we now need to calculate what our net electric field is from what we had here. Let me go ahead and pause this and I will go ahead and reset up the uh, uh, the screen so that we can make this a little bit easier. All right, we've now moved things around so that we have a little less stuff on the page and we have plenty of room over here to work. Remembering that electric field is a vector and we have two vector components that are at, that are perpendicular to one another, we know we must use Pythagorean theorem. So we know that our net electric field squared, our hypotenuse, must equal 6 E9 squared plus 4.5 E9 squared. So let's go ahead and bring in our calculator over here. That's not very working easily here. Good. E9 uh, squared plus 4.5 E9 squared equals, take the square root, the answer, you don't even need that, 7.5 you. We'll clear that and come back and use you later. Equals 7.5 times 10 to the ninth newtons per coulomb. So, um, what about the direction? Well, we generally take all of our directions here from the x-axis. Now, you could find this one right here, which would be just, just fine. And when we do ours from the x-axis, we say the tangent of the angle equals the opposite, which is generally y over x, or that theta equals the inverse tangent of y, which is a positive 6. Now, notice these 9's all canceled out. I'm going to write this just so that you understand why we don't really have to write all this. I wouldn't be writing this except that I'm showing you guys this. Do you see how there's a 10 to the 9th on the top and a 10 to the 9th on the bottom? So all you really had to do was the inverse tangent of 6 over, and actually that's pointing to the left, which is a negative 4.5. Well, theta equals, let's bring out ti again. There it is. So we'll take the inverse tangent of 6 divided by negative 4.5. And that gives me, um, that's, uh, oh darn, we're in radians. Let me go ahead and move that down. Okay, so let's try this again. Inverse tangent, 6 divided by negative 4.5 equals, and that's times 10 to the first, so that's negative 53.1. Oh, but we say no. 
that's fourth quadrant. And if you look, fourth quadrant is down here. So we have to do a quadrant check because tangent only goes from 90 to negative 90. Now that we know that we're not in the fourth quadrant, we have to go ahead and add 180. So let's do that very quickly. And there we have 120, uh, we'll just call it 127 degrees to be easy. Which we know is in the second quadrant, so that's correct. So that's how you find the net electric field.